When it comes to fighting game history, the Tekken series Hihachi Mishima is certainly not winning any Father of the Year awards. In fact, this combatant has gone down in infamy for throwing his child over a cliff edge, functioning as one of the most dastardly moments in the story of gaming. As more and more Tekken games were released, we would learn more and more about Hihachi and his dysfunctional family, with them generally taking it in turns or throwing each other off the side of mountains. Carriers of the Devil Gene including his son Kazuya and by Tekken 3 his grandson Jin Kazama, we would get to know more about his bloodline. But it would not be until Tekken 5 that we would finally get to meet Hihachi Senior. This truly horrifying individual is the true granddaddy of the Mishima family and what a formidable force he is. So with all of that said, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of Jinpachi Mishima, Hihachi's even more terrifying father. Yeah. The Mishima family are lunatics and have been at the front and centre of Tekken lore for the entire time the franchise has existed. The first game sees Hihachi, leader of the Mishima Zaibatsu financial group, sponsor a martial arts tournament known as the King of Iron Fist, whereby someone must defeat him themselves to win. One of the competitors in the tournament is Kazuya Mishima, the child Hihachi threw off the cliff. Hihachi is said to have done this to cruelly test how strong his son was and see if he was his worthy successor. Surviving and climbing back up the cliff, this only enrages Kazuya, who chooses to enact revenge on his father in the competition. He ends up throwing his father from the very same cliff face at the end of the game. In Tekken 2, which is set two years after the events of the first game, the new owner of the Mishima Zaibatsu hosts a fighting tournament of his very own. Like his son before him, Hihachi also survived the cliff fall and climbs back up to compete in the new King of Iron Fist. During the course of the tournament, Kazuya meets June Kazama, who would later become the mother to his child. It is said that Kazuya's feelings for June is what caused him to lose concentration in the tournament, with his father gaining an upper hand in their match. As one final move, Kazuya transforms into his terrifying devil form, but somehow Hihachi still manages to best him. Since previously throwing Kazuya off a cliff was said to be to make him stronger, in an act of retribution this time around, Hihachi would do something much worse, throw his son into a volcano. The story of this Jerry Springer-like family continues into Tekken 3, with Kazuya's son Jin replacing him as a playable character in the game. In the plot, Hihachi once again controls the Mishima Zaibatsu, discovering a mysterious powerful being known as Ogre, so sets out to capture him to give himself even more power. Ogre ends up destroying Jin's village and killing his mother, so as previously instructed by her, seeks out his estranged grandfather. It is soon revealed that Jin, like his father, also carries the Devil Gene, and after revealing himself to his grandfather, Hihachi trains him in the Mishima style of fighting, despite suspecting he is as dangerous as his father. Hihachi hosts the third Iron Fist tournament, hoping it would draw out Ogre. This does the trick, and in a fit of rage, Jin ends up killing the beast when competing against them. Hihachi then attempts to execute his grandson with a gunshot to the head, but this just activates his Devil Gene. Tekken 3 ends with Hihachi being slammed through a temple wall by Jin, before he flies off into the night. In the next game, in the mainline series Tekken 4, we learn that Kazuya is still alive and has been healed up by the G Corporation, a group of scientific researchers. Hihachi learns of this, so hosts a full Fire and Fist tournament, with the Mishima Zaibatsu being the prize to lure him out. In the tournament, Jin and Kazuya meet and face off for the first time. Shenanigans unfold with all three generations of the family having hostile exchanges with each other. The end of Tekken 4 takes place in Honomaru Temple on the Mishima Estate, where we see Jin nearly kill Hihachi, but this is stopped after seeing a vision of his mother. This finally brings us to Tekken 5, and the part of the Tekken story we shall be most focusing on today. Taking place literally directly after the events of Tekken 4, Hihachi and his son Kazuya are both still in the Honomaru Temple. Out of nowhere, they get surrounded by Jack 4 robots. Kazuya manages to escape, but the robots self-destruct, leading to Hihachi to be presumed dead. Despite Hihachi seemingly being gone, a mysterious individual announces a King of Iron Fist 5, which Jin chooses to enter. 
Upon making it right to the end of the tournament, Jin faces off against a terrifying demonic entity, who he learns to be his great-grandfather, Jin Pachi, which raises the question, what the hell was going on here and why was this monstrous fighter not in any of the previous Tekken games? Well, remember that temple I mentioned earlier known as Honmaru? That very location links to all of the madness that is unfolding. Many years ago, it was Jim Pachi who was the man who founded the Mishima Zaibatsu in the first place, whereby rapid expansion was possible by capitalizing on the huge military demand that was around during World War II. Back then though, Jim Pachi had regrets and was ashamed that he had made so much money from people killing one another during the war, so would instead devote a large chunk of his life peacefully pursuing martial arts. While Jinpachi at the time was capable of compassion, his son Hihachi on the other hand was far more of a deranged loose cannon. In fact, Hihachi would end up vindictively staging a coup so that he could steal his own father's company. Jinpachi would try to take back what was his, but Hihachi would instead manage to imprison him beneath the Honmaru temple, ruthlessly leaving his own father to die from starvation. What Hihachi had not bargained for though was that the evil he had inflicted on his father would result in him becoming reanimated by a demonic entity. And when those jack robots blew up the temple, Jinpachi along with the evil force steering him would be freed. Hearing too about Hihachi's demise, he would reassume control of the Mishima Zaibatsu with him calling the fifth Iron Fist tournament himself. Being essentially a crazed, vengeful, evil spirit, you may perhaps be thinking why, especially bearing in mind that he thinks Hihachi is dead and he has his company back anyway. The truth is that although Jinpachi is a corrupted spirit with unearthly supernatural powers, there is still good inside him somewhere and he feels that if someone can defeat him, they will free him from the intense evil taking over him completely. To achieve this, he seeks out his old friend Wang Jinrei and invites him to the tournament. A friend from the past who has a lot of regrets about not being able to save Jinpachi from Hihachi. To make matters worse, for years Hihachi manipulated him into believing Jinpachi was the real threat. Wang accepts Jinpachi's challenge but wishes there was another way to deal with this situation. As highlighted earlier though, it is Jinpachi's great-grandson Jin who ends up meeting him in the tournament final. Under the possession of the darkness that is consuming him, Jinpachi's eyes glow a fiery yellow and a huge horrifying fanged mouth opens in his abdomen. In this terrifying form, he also glows with a disturbing misty aura. Ultimately, Jin is able to overcome the might of his horrific-looking great-grandfather. But we do get some additional storytelling if a player loses to him in Tekken 5. This shows game as a bad ending instead. A bloody tear can be seen running down Jinpachi's face before transforming further with the evil spirit taking over him completely. A message reads Jinpachi's mind is consumed by the devil as he reaches his final transformation. The world will never be the same. In the story canon though, Jin does indeed defeat him, finally putting his great-grandfather to rest, who gratefully passes away peacefully. With Jinpachi dissolving into dust, this leaves Jin the owner of the Mishima Zaibatsu, feeding into the narrative of the games that would soon follow. As for Hihachi's father, Jinpachi though, was he worse than his son? Well, he certainly was from a certain point of view. That's what Obi-Wan Kenobi would say anyway. What I'm basically getting at is that throughout his life it seems that Jinpachi was a more compassionate man than the son who staged a coup against him, incarcerated him, then starved him to death. But this extreme act of evil would contribute to changing Jinpachi and him returning down the line as a terrifying vengeful spirit, the likes of which was far more horrifying to look at than Hihachi. Jinpachi would make history as the first completely non-playable boss in a Tekken fighting game. But when the updated version of Tekken 5 was released, known as Dark Resurrection for the PlayStation 3, Jinpachi would indeed finally become playable. When it comes to pure destructive capabilities, Jinpachi stands unrivaled. He strikes possess immense power, reach impressive distances effortlessly, and these punches pack an incredible punch. 
Despite his limited mobility, he compensates with the ability to swiftly maneuver using astral projection, propelling himself forward or backward. As a result, Jinpachi remains a constant menace to his adversaries, no matter their location. Additionally, his flight prowess enables him to exert long-range pressure, catching opponents off guard with unexpected assaults. However, this advantage diminishes significantly in close quarters, as a simple jab can effectively count his efforts. Away from a series story canon, this disturbing looking fighter would continue to make an impact elsewhere with the franchise. This would include him becoming playable within Tekken Tag Tournament 2. In the game's self-contained story, he catches a cab to Hihachi's tournament. But being a very old man, like all very old men in Japanese anime and games, the cab driver just assumes Jinpachi is a dirty old man. So misinterprets his instructions and takes him to the red light district. He wanders around looking for the other fighters, with the ladies of the night trying to get his business in the process. His ending movie depicts him confronting Hihachi with him deeply desiring revenge. Jinpachi then unleashes his extreme power that destroys everything around him, knocking Hihachi away. Further to all of this, Jinpachi would also show up as a possible sub-boss in Tekken Revolution, a free-to-play downloadable fighting game for the PlayStation 3 that has since been removed. Considering that this one has been delisted, it could be a fun topic to discuss on here down the line, so subscribe if you want me to cover that one. As for Jinpachi though, despite his demonic appearance that makes him look terrifying and far worse than Hihachi, in life he was probably the nicest machine of the whole bunch. A man of honour, harmony and wisdom. But his Tekken 5 appearance and subsequent re-emergencies have been truly horrifying. Anyway, if you liked that one, watch my video on when Akuma invaded the Tekken universe right now. Cheerio!